Welcome to the Genealogy Happy Hour, a place where new family historians can learn to document their family histories and celebrate their new discoveries. I'm Amy. And I'm Penny. And we're here to help you discover your family tree from the beginning. Welcome to episode 40. In this episode, we're going to discuss uh, citations, how to do them, why they're important, and we are going to introduce to you a program that's out there that it will help you with these citations in an incredible way. It'll simplify your life with your citations. And we've got uh, a guest with us, Donna Cox Baker, who is going to explain it all. But first, the wine. The wine. Always the wine first. But I am very excited about this uh, particular podcast. But my favorite wine has, is always Chardonnay. That's my go-to is mm-hmm. the Chardonnay. So today we're featuring the Josh Sellers Chardonnay Northern Coast. It is a semi-sweet uh, Chardonnay. It's um, barrel fermented, so it's going to be buttery. It's apple, pear, vanilla. Uh, with some citrus crisp, mm-hmm. and um, it's very available, so um, we're going to grab a bottle and enjoy. Mm-hmm. And you know, Amy, it's um, going to be summer soon, and we'll probably be hitting some rosés again. We I'm will, some French rosés. Rose. That's so, true. It's the best. Nice. But I'm super excited about citations. I mean, I'm actually not super excited about citations. You are. You I are hate citation citations. Nerd, yeah. No, <laughs> most genealogists hate citations, and I think it really it stops some people from writing their genealogy, mm-hmm. their histories, their their family narratives, mm-hmm. um, because a good, responsible genealogist knows they need to cite their sources, and it can become very cumbersome and very complicated. And um, I'm writing now, right now, a three-generation um, lineage, uh, narrative lineage, and it's a lot of citations, you know? <clears throat> and it just takes a lot of time, um, a lot of referencing um, the guidelines, um, a lot of using uh, Elizabeth Schoen Mills, Evidence Explained. Um, so this, I'm excited to hear about this program. I'm excited to try and use it and see if it's going to help me tremendously. So. Yeah, I've been, I've been playing around with it quite a bit. And, um, you know, we have a research trip coming up. <clears throat> we do. So I have been trying to start some research um, filing and citation work and whatnot in this program, um, which is called Zotero. And our guest today, Donna Cox Baker, has written a wonderful book called Zotero for Genealogy which we will talk to her about. It's, um, it kind of walks you through how to use this program, which she used uh, while getting her doctorate in history, doing her thesis work. So she had, as she writes in the beginning of the book, of her book, Zotero for Genealogy, um, how when she went back to her first love, genealogy, and started working through um, the research logs and, and all that kind of stuff. And she said it was just really cumbersome, and then she dawned on her, oh my gosh, I could use the same program for my citations and bibliographies and um, storing documents and making notes. This program was incredible. So she went and used it like that and then wrote a book on how, how the rest of us can use it for our genealogy. That's kind of, that's kind of funny because so many, you, we compartmentalize these tools that we, these learning tools that we have. Well, I use that in college, but I'm not using it here in, in this particular um, vocation. So she's been able to, to bridge that and then utilize it for, yeah. for genealogy. And, and for, for the everyday genealogist, you, you don't necessarily have to get the perfect um, citation down. You just need to be able to find it again and somebody else who sees your citation needs to be able to find the same thing that, that you found. Absolutely, yes. You make sure you have to have the who, who made it, who wrote it, what it is, what's the title, um, when, when it was written, when it was created, when it was updated. Um, where it was located, where it was located, where you located it. Where you located it, mm-hmm. where it was published, um, and then the where in, um, what page it might be on if it's in a folder where's the folder if it's a person where do you find this person you know that kind of thing if it's digitized where which website and the date that you accessed it yes so yeah yes. just, just get as much information in your citation where this program will just do it for you it's so nice 
Um, so we're going to be talking to her in just a, in just a minute. But Sarah, um, I know you said you're really excited about the citations uh, or this, this podcast and you're working on um, your program or your research Correct. for it. Yes. Have you, um, have you come across any like crazy things that you'd have to write a citation for that? That's, you know, that's the, the tricky part is um, sometimes the citations are very personal because you're actually writing a little, um, I don't know, a little proof statement maybe in, in a, um, in a footnote rather than putting it you, you want to explain some information that you don't want to necessarily put in the in the dialogue or in the narrative that you've got but you need to put it down there so there are some things that that footnotes can be very personal and very unique to a situation where other times we know we have to footnote the birth certificate the death certificate the marriage the probates all those types of things the photographs the cemetery a lot of the of the things that genealogists cite are repetitive Mm-hmm. But sure. then those are those unique things. So I'll be interested to see how how that um, those unique situations mm-hmm. are handled in this program. But I'm just excited to find a program that will help me do it. Yeah. And then instead of struggling through each particular citation over and over again. So. Sure. All right. All right. Well, let's get to it. All right. Welcome to the podcast, Donna. We really appreciate you coming on and talking to us about Zotero. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate the chance to talk about it. Never get tired of talking about it. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. So this is a, a program that helps people with their citations and, and footnotes and whatnot. And you have found a way to make it work for genealogists. Yeah. You know, um, it, it it is actually my research keeper, and, and it replaces all the things that used to fill up a room, the uh, file cabinets, the file folders and all of that. The citations, uh, while that was the most critical thing in graduate school and is important in genealogy as well, is this great perk uh, for all the other things it does too. Um, and and it, was a, it was really a miracle uh, in graduate school when I was doing footnotes because quite honestly I don't do them that often when I'm writing now because I'm not writing um, uh, I'm not writing for genealogy publication so much, but um, but it it was able to take so much of the pain, the headache, the fear out of public out of citations because we worry, you know, are we going to have a period in the right place, a comma in the right place? Those things we called term papers in high school that you know it was all about whether you got that exactly right, and this just sort of removes that and lets you concentrate on what really matters, the research and the writing. Well, and you mentioned organization, and that's an important part of writing because yeah, before yeah. you can start writing, you have to um, collect all of the documents that you're going to be yeah. referencing. You have to collect all the notes and the materials. So, yeah. um, so how would you begin um, writing um, a lineage using uh, Zotero, starting with the organization part, I suppose? Well, I, I think that um, you've got a uh, you've got a couple of layers of research that happen, and for me, I start with what I call big R research. I start with general going out there looking to see what there is uh, before I start detail work. Um, and the detail work in genealogy often, of course, is who was born when and and who was married to whom when and all of those kind of things. So you're collecting all those things, and we're accustomed to collecting those attached to our family tree. But but if you're if you're telling your family story, you're going to be going bigger, and you're going to get a, you're going to collect a lot of things that um, that are going to be um, are going to surround the family. Uh, there are going to be things about the town. There's going to be things about their church. There's going to be things that you collect that don't necessarily have a place to sit in your genealogy. Uh, software, the family tree software, you've got to collect all that. And um, so that, I call that big R research. And um, so that you're, you're going to find a place for it. And I usually start by just reading uh, materials that are going to be connected to what I'm doing. And I begin by putting them in, in um, uh, you know, let's say I'm reading about a town, I'll, I'll put it in a, a folder about that town. Um, but later, as I'm actually organizing to write something specific, then I'm going to uh, reorganize based on what my chapters are going to be. And the beautiful thing about Zotero is uh, you're not um, 
you're not uh, having to change the original organization. You can actually keep your folders up there that, that had the uh, information about a particular town, about a particular church, all of those. But then you can drag and drop material into the chapter folders without uh, without copying it. I mean, it's, it, it, it exists in both places so that you can organize the same material in multiple different ways um, without having to repeat it or having to lose the original organization. Does that, that make sense? That's very cool. So if you're, yeah. I, one of the things that I always go to first is um, try and find those um, those county histories that were published around 1900 exactly. and to just right. get a flavor of what it was hopefully like you know i can find the time period where my ancestor lived so that would be something that you could store in 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 this particular area and yes i know yes. another it's, thing it's, oh i was gonna say sorry. another thing that you had um you talk about in your book uh is when you've got pdfs up there of like say a town history and i think one of the examples was a town history that you can um highlight and annotate and everything that you do on that pdf highlighted you save it you know if you save it it's saved in your zotero right there is an add-on that will allow you to do that and that was another godsend in graduate school for me too because you are you're um you're highlighting things you're adding comments in the pdf this assumes by the way that, that it's a pdf that can be you know that you can actually select text in that that you can search text in um if it's a if it's just a pdf that's just pure pictures of the page instead of editable text then then it won't work but but with this it does and and when you pull it back in with this particular add-on which there's a chapter about in the book but when you pull that in um, it takes every highlight that you took it takes every comment that you took and it types it for you into your notes um, so that you don't have to after you've done that work uh, then go type it back into into notes for it to be meaningful and the PDF is there and searchable as well um, so it, uh, it it's it's fabulous. I love that feature. Wow. Yeah. 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 And um, I know also when you when you uh, bring something in, you you uh, yes. save your the well, you're not really saving the file to Zotero. You're saving the link to your file because you said um, Zotero is a free program up to is it three hundred. I yeah, I think it's three. It's three hundred meg. Yeah, so which it sound, sounds small. So what I counsel people to do with that uh, to to keep it free as long as as they can is uh, to, is to um, keep your files the, the 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 fat files that have pictures in them and all that keep them on your drive and link to them instead of pulling them in. Mm -hmm. But you can pull them into Zotero for an incredibly reasonable price. Most scholars, uh, you know, once they're doing this heavily, this work heavily, are going to pay the. I, I think it's 120 a year or something like that awesome. for unlimited, unlimited space, which you don't get unlimited anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's amazing. But I like actually linking to my own drive and, and having my own cloud um, backing things up and making them available to me. Yeah. So you can do it either way. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And um, one of your favorite things is the organization that you can have yeah. these little file cabinets <laughs> kind of thing yeah, over yeah, on the yeah. side. And how do you um, how do you organize your file cabinets? Well, when it's when it, I, I'm, I'm actually using this for so many things besides genealogy that I I have organized mine into business, personal, and um, and family history. So I've got three major folders, but then within family history, I have a structure that I talk about in the book where I have four major um, categories. I have people, places, tools, and uh, I'm suddenly going blank on what my own fourth thing is. Um, uh, it'll come to me in a minute, but I, and then within people, I put surnames, okay? okay? And within surnames, I put a folder for each person mm -hmm. that I have found something specific about. Um, I try to keep it simple like that, um, and uh, rather than getting into any kind of complex numbering system or something, if I have a woman who uh, who I need to, to file and I don't know her um, her maiden name, I will use, I'll put her under her husband's family temporarily, um, you know, with, with his name and an unknown uh, last name until I can move her to her maiden name. But maiden name is the one thing that really didn't change. You know, everything else could change, but her maiden name doesn't. So I make that usually where I'm going to put a woman. 
Right. I do that. I did the same thing too. Yeah. 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 So what did I say? Place in places I would have. Um, now I, I am I am still just doing U.S. research. I've got I, I, my uh, my life hasn't let me get uh, any further back than that. So so but it, it's, if you're doing international, you might have a folder for each country. But under United States, I am putting I'll put a state. Within that, I'll put a county. Within that, I'll put towns. And if I and if I really want to get granular, I might have folders for churches, schools, um, whatever I might be researching that I would have a lot of um, material for. I, I put a folder, but I, I put them layered inside each other so that I can always find my way back. So um, we've been. I think we've gotten away from our, our citations. Part yeah. of it, which yes, which yes. is which is fine though, because we love organization with uh, genealogy work as well, right. and I'm super excited to um, implement all these things that you've just talked about in our Connecticut right. research for my trip up there. So I'll be able to find anything quickly. But as right. far as the citations go, I know I was looking at something on Ancestry the other day. It had a they had a digitized book, and they had. Um, it was uh, like the fam, uh, the what did I say? It was ancient families of New Haven, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's a section in there that had my family, and I um, I was able because I had uh, followed your advice and yeah. <laughs> followed your directions and downloaded yeah. the the um, the thing so I could use it with Chrome, and I could just click the little button and add it right oh, yeah. to Zotero, and it it created yeah. instantly the citation for that particular yes. book that was on ancestry and i was like this is genius <laughs> well that that's what that's what sold me on it in the in the first place because in graduate school i was afraid of a free product i thought if it's free it can't be very good and and i don't want to trust my my dissertation to something that's free mm -hmm. and, but but when somebody told me it would do that and and i realized that, that the thousands of books i was going to have to cite um that it and then i just pressed a button a piece and it Pulled them in for me. Occasionally, you have to clean up behind somebody's bed and metadata, but mm -hmm. but most of the, most of it did the work for me and in putting it into the database form. And then later, using another um, add-on uh, when you're in Microsoft Word or in your in your Word document, you can tell it you want it to make a footnote or make a bibliography, and it just pulls it and does it, and it's. Um, it just it really does take the pain out of it. It was incredible. I tried that too. Now I have no plans on writing up my research and doing anything. I know Amy does, so I know she'll love that to be able to just yes. create that footnote instantly. Um, I did notice when I put when I put that book in and it created the citation. There there were some. Uh, spots where I could add some information if I thought like I needed to put in the exact page numbers because I had several families in, in that book so I needed to right, right. Um, do that so I, I could add right. a couple little things in the blanks and that just filled it in so it was yes you could no mm -hmm. you could also add that at the stage where you're um, you're citing the source in the book um, because a lot of my graduate work uh, graduate school work I, I, I might have I might have cited uh, you know 45 different places in one book um, so they're in all these different notes so when I'm actually writing my dissertation um, I would get to the place where uh, I was ready to cite the particular statement I just made and I knew that that came from page 45 then I then I insert 45 on the go when I'm actually writing um, rather than um, have to uh, you know try to pull the 45 out of Zotero. Gotcha. So, uh, so you can do it whatever way is going to work best for you. So if you needed to know that it was page 45 for that particular yeah. um, uh, notation or whatever, there is a section in Zotero that has notes and you can just write the yep. note, you can write yourself a note what's on page 45 or... Exactly, yeah. exactly. So you won't forget. Yeah. Now, can you tell it uh, what type of citation you want to use, whether it's um, MLA or Chicago, or do you, do you have to set that up at the beginning? Uh, well, you, you can set it up. Um, you can change uh, along the way if you're publishing for one publisher who wants it one way and another another then it and then it can oh, uh, move those things around for sweet, you sweet. but uh, so so if you need MLA for for one publisher but you need Chicago manual style for mm -hmm. another you just you just change it at the time you're ready to, to do your work and it will uh, alter the footnote yeah so 
Yeah. So, but for me, uh, Chicago Manual of Style is my style of choice because the history field that that's what right. I got my PhD in. That's um, that's what I we use in the history field, and so to the extent I can, that's what I mm-hmm. want to use. And I usually recommend uh, for, for people who haven't already don't already have a style of choice. I usually recommend uh, that, that that's where they start. Right, and that's re- so, usually yeah. recommended for genealogy. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, how do you handle um, those unique situations? Are, are you? Do you have to write them on the fly when you have a unique, um, a unique citation, or you need to perhaps write a, a, a proof statement within a footnote? How does that work with Zotero? Uh, you can uh, add that also. Uh, yeah, you can add it on the fly. What I would usually do in a case like that, I would r- write what I wanted to, uh, what I was going to want to include when I got ready to write. I'd either put it in a note attached to my Zotero record, or you could put it in the extra field that is on all Zotero records. Um, so put it in a place where you can you can easily pull it. But when you get ready to write, um, when you're creating your footnote in, let's say, Microsoft Word, you let it pull the technical details and then uh, at the back end of that uh, after after that last period then you can paste in that extra material you want to add okay yeah okay and it will embed it in there good I like that I like that yeah so you wrote this book Zotero for genealogy which is great and um, uh, anybody that's listening that wants to get Zotero and try it I highly recommend Donna's book um, because it's it's um, not a huge book, so you don't have. And the best thing about it <laughs> is Donna's got these little exercises in it. So every time she talks about how to do something, she gives you an exercise so you can do it in Zotero while you're um, following along in the book. So it's really hands on. Very hands on. Example. Nice. Mm-hmm. Very hands on, and Good job, that Donna. was so helpful. Well, thank you for me. Thank you, and I, and I have to credit uh, Linda Balderson, who uh, who was uh, my reader as I was going along, and she was coming along behind me and telling me what was working and wasn't working. And she said, "I think it would be helpful to do exercises." I, I'm so glad she suggested it because that was what spurred the idea of putting sample data, I put sample data out on Zotero's group site so that it, the minute you join my group, it, it downloads samples onto your own Zotero records so that w- as we're talking about things in the book, you're looking at what I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, that was that was particularly uh, useful advice from, from Linda, and I'm grateful to her. And the group that you have, is that the place where someone would go if they don't understand how to do something or they have a thought like, hey, I need to do this, I couldn't figure it out, other people would then jump in and help? Well, I was going to use it that way when I originally created it, but I I found that it was more limited than I wanted it to be. So uh, the the group that's on Zotero, it allows us to just to collaborate on that that initial um, sampling of material, but I've created a uh, website called Zotero, uh, Zotero for genealogy.com and uh, we've got a, a forum there and people have been ask, uh, well, asking each other and helping each other in the most brilliant ways uh, to deal with very specific problems and they'll say how are you going to handle the Norwegian records and this and that and of course I know nothing about Norwegian records but another person <laughs> will pipe in um, and, and help and sorry I, I hear my own phone ringing there, I apologize. That's but, okay. um, uh, they uh, they have been um, they've been great to each other, and that's only going to get bigger. And the material that's there will always be there for people to check back on. But um, you know, we're, we're uh, any kind. Of, uh, I've had people teaching me things that were that they were finding in Zotero that I didn't even know were there. Um, so it's been it's been great, and that's Zotero for genealogy dot com. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. I'll have to I'll have to check that out because yeah. I'm one of those people like I can follow it. I've done it. I'm going to implement it, but then if I don't do it for a few days or a week and I come back yep. to it, I'm like, okay, I don't remember how to do any of this stuff again. Exactly. I have to exactly. go through it again. Yeah. 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 So, Penny, are we going to have a link on our website? We will. To we will put a link on our website to, to your Zotera book and, and, book. and to your, um, your group. So if right. people can check it out, and I highly encourage anybody who's wanting to 
be organized. You know, if you've used Evernote or anything like that, this this works. I love this layout for. Yeah. Well, you know, I had, I had started with with uh, Evernote and one attempting to use those mm -hmm. uh, because I, I'm a OneNote user. I've been using it for many years in business, but um, but I, what I was missing was the structure that I wanted for citations. So uh, while those are great for storing data, they weren't as good for storing structured data like citations. And so mm -hmm. this gives me both at yeah. the same time. This is wonderful. Wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you for sharing it with us. We sure, really appreciate sure. That. And so, and Donna, if they don't come to our website, where where can they go out on the web to get your information? Is it just the Zotero for genealogy? Yeah, if they go there, they'll they'll get basically a description of the book and then the and the forums there, and um, so yeah, I think that was probably probably be the best place to start. I, um, mm -hmm. I, the that will take them also then to my store if they want to buy the book, um, but um, but yeah yeah I think that's the best place to start. So okay. tariff for genealogy.com. Excellent, right. excellent. Sure. Well, again, thank you so much. And sure, thank you. All right. We will have links to Donna's website and book on our website, www.genealogyhappyhour.com. And that wraps up episode 40. Cheers. Thank you for listening. Please email us with any questions or comments at genealogyhappyhour at gmail.com. Visit our website, www.genealogyhappyhour.com, for additional resources, books, and wines. Don't forget to drink responsibly and never drink around genealogical documents.